Hey everyone, welcome back to the layout once again, and thank you for sticking with me. Um, elephant in the room, it has been over two months now since my last video, period. Um, so obviously that's no good, and I really feel bad about that. Um, and we could talk about that and what all happened and, and all that good stuff, but um, if it's alright with you, let's, let's just pretend like that didn't happen, okay? Um, so with that behind us then, I do want to quickly debrief about what to expect in this video and then what to expect in future videos uh, like this one. Um, so not so much recently, but for a while uh, I was really good at doing two types of videos. One was general layout updates where I just talked about, you know, um, whatever's happened within a week or two or whatever and uh, anything that's happened on the layout, any completed steps and whatnot, any new rolling stock and all that stuff. But then I also did um, video series on the process of building the layout. And those focused, as I just mentioned, more on the process rather than the completed um, step or product. And those videos were what I initially titled layout construction videos and I think now I'm on like the uh, building the BNSF planes division title um, so anyway this video right here is gonna be one of those construction videos and um, what the problem that I had in the past was that I wanted to make these videos super elaborate and very logical and episodic and linear but on a layout this size which isn't it's not enormous but it's also not a four-way table I have a hard time getting really organized and doing um, certain steps on the layout from start to finish before starting something else. So, for example, you can see I don't even have the backdrop fully in, but I've also started to prepare the backdrop for paint. And what I would like to have done is done a construction video on just doing the fascia backdrop and all of that across the entire layout from start to finish, being the installation, preparation, and painting, but I'm just really not that good at uh, being organized and uh, collecting all those videos over months and months. Um, so, long story short here, I think what I'm gonna do then is get back to doing those construction videos, but rather than make them longer, you know, eight, nine, 10 minute videos covering an entire step on the entire layout, I am going to break it up into smaller chunks, and that way we'll focus on um, you know, smaller steps, but still working towards an ultimate goal. And that way, you still get to see exactly what I'm doing as I'm working, um, but without the big weight between videos. And uh, sometimes those clips just never even get uploaded because uh, I'm not able to thread them into a video very nicely. So, um, anyway, I'll stop blabbering, but what we're going to do today is talk about just preparing the backdrop and the fascia and what I'm doing for that, um, as well as getting rid of light bleed up on the valence. And then in the next video, we will look at painting, and that's probably going to be it. So you can expect from these construction videos um, about three, maybe four minutes of information, usually. Um, this one, of course, is longer because I took all that time to explain what I'm going to be doing. but. Um, that's 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 my plan, and of course we will just have to see whether or not I stick to it. But uh, that's at least what is in my mind, and I just wanted to share that with you. So with that out of the way, um, let's go ahead and focus on what we're going to work on today, and that is, as I mentioned, getting rid of light bleed, and then preparing the surfaces of the backdrop as well as the fascia for paint. So I'm using a couple materials to get rid of any seams that we have in the fascia um, as well as any screw holes that have been left and I start first with this aluminum tape um, this is from 3M but there's also other brands it's basically just uh, HVAC tape it's uh, aluminum foil and it works really great because it's 100% opaque which means that it'll get rid of any sort of light but in addition to that it's metal right so it's not going to tear it's very strong and is it the most um, efficient or recommended way to do this some might be asking and to that I would say probably not I honestly don't know what I'm doing but somebody left this at our house uh, probably the air conditioning guys and um, it was lying around and I just needed some material that was super thin and wouldn't be a at all visible after painting and um, but also strong enough and this stuff fit the bill. Um, so then after 
I've put this on, as we will see in just a second. I am uh, then using just some standard joint compound. This is Rapid Coat, Rapid Coat Low Dust, excuse me. Um, so we'll take a look at then how I apply this and the sanding process, and that'll really be it. So this section right here is a great example of where this aluminum tape and eventually um, some joint compound will be needed. And I think a lot of people would say, well, what's the problem with just putting the joint compound over this? Uh, absolutely nothing wrong with that, especially if you have a, a strong frame behind it. But I only have a 1x4 frame behind here, and most of this height is not secured by anything other than the paper uh, scenery substructure, which means if I press on either of these, um, they give independently and if I would just put joint compound over this eventually a small little crack would form and uh, it just gets annoying to go back over that with joint compound and then paint and rinse and repeat uh, so rather um, to prevent that what I've done here already is sort of gone in and sanded so there were a couple of screw holes here and uh, those have been countersunk sunk not countersunk but countersunk um, sanded over those and now I just want to put a piece of aluminum tape over the seam. That'll just sort of, um, it won't totally hide it, right? We're still going to have to go in with joint compound. And what, what the joint compound then will be primarily is getting rid of the edge or the lip that we have on the tape. Even though this stuff is super thin, it'll still probably show off after paint. Um, so we'll still go over it with joint compound. But this will at least tie these two pieces together and then it'll take the focus away from the big seam in the middle and then we'll just have to do a little tiny amount of joint compounds. So um, let me just crease down here and then I will cut this with some scissors. And it has awesome adhesive backing, of course, so I will just peel that off and then make sure it's straight. I'll start at the top, just sort of one thumb there. It's lined up and then just run a bead down the middle, fold it under, and then I'll just work my way out, make sure there's no bubbles and whatnot. So I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but those screw holes still have a little bit of bump. You can see them, especially since this metal is reflective, you get a good sense of the contour. Um, but again, we'll go in with some joint compound and smooth that all out. So now I've got some of this joint compound here. I'll put a little bit on the putty knife, like so. And then I really am just focused, as I mentioned, on getting the, the edge there. So, oops, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I just want to get enough on that edge that I can come back and sand it. And then I'll actually get some right in the middle too, since there was a little bit of lip there. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the drywall compound. I'm going to let that dry. Um, I'm probably not going to show sanding because I think you guys know what sanding looks like. And uh, pretty straightforward there. But let's go look at the other side of the layout really quick. So we're almost done here, um, but I just want to show this really quick. This is uh, a finished seam that I have used the aluminum tape on. You can actually kind of see the tape peeking out uh, because I've already sanded this one down, this is all dry and sanded, and um, the edge is sort of peeking out as I said, but if you run your fingers over it, which I know you cannot, but I can, um, it feels smooth and once that's painted nothing will peek through. Uh, same with the seam down the middle. Um, the tape uh, sort of shows through there because these two pieces came together at a slight angle since it's along a curve and this is a seam right in the middle of the curve, kind of not ideal, but I couldn't avoid it. Um, but it all worked out. Now it's once again a nice smooth curve and again no eyeballs will be able to detect that after it's all painted. Uh, now moving this way, what I'm working on now, and I'm not really going to show this because it's very straightforward, same process I was using before, uh, except what I'm doing up on the valence is getting rid of the light bleed. So in addition to doing the same thing I do along the seams, up along the ceiling 
Um, the ceiling actually has some warp to it. Uh, it's not perfectly straight, and usually these boards are pretty much perfectly straight. So you can see there's some light coming through from behind. All I've done is taken the uh, aluminum tape, and what looks like light coming through is actually just the crease of the tape. There's a little lip that I've kind of overlapped onto the ceiling, and it's just reflecting light. Um, so you can see that blocks the light entirely, and if we move down here, Here's a section that I have finished and is ready for painting. Um, actually, I think I still need to do a little bit of sanding. But then what I've done is after the tape is there and it's creased along the ceiling slightly, then just using my finger, I've been able to run a bead of joint compound uh, between the ceiling and the tape, and that seals off that, uh, that light completely. So if, even, even if there's a little bit coming through the tape, now it's completely gone because of the joint compound and uh, now this whole section towards the end is pretty much one with the ceiling and the wall. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, I know that video is longer than I anticipated, but I uh, just wanted to show what I'm doing in preparation for painting the backdrop and the fascia and valence. And next week, um, actually sooner than that I hope, uh, I will be doing that, doing just that, painting the backdrop and uh, the face of the layout. And uh, I'll have a video on that specifically. We will talk about the uh, rollers I'm using, and then um, more importantly, and more interestingly, what color paint I have chosen for the sky and for the fascia and valence. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I know this was an extremely boring video, but nonetheless, I find it enjoyable to watch other people uh, do work on their layout, so hopefully, uh, the same is true for you. If not, I don't really care. You don't have to watch it. Um, so anyway, guys, as I already said, thanks so much for watching and I will see you very soon.